Welcome back Stoner Squad and welcome to all those new to the channel. My name is Dan is Stoned and thank you for joining me today to start a brand new Imperial of Rome achievement hunt run. So considering the current achievement hunt run as Heraclea Pontica going for Heraclea Persica is going very well, I thought it was about time that I started a simultaneous campaign to kind of, you know, get things going a bit further on and of course tick another achievement off the damn list and um, I've been thinking quite a while where I would like to play and I decided that it's going to be somewhere I have never ever played before and that is the Indian subcontinent now which achievement do I want to go for here well I had a look down the list on Steam on the list of achievements and one pretty much tickled me fancy more than the others and that is the Shockers Pillars achievement which is as the Mauryas you need to conquer the whole of India convert to Buddhism and then achieve 80% religious unity. Why this achievement might you ask? Well with the Heraclea Persica campaign it actually helped me get ready for this because if you guys remember for those who have been watching the series that we start off as um, I think it's Greek or Hellenic religion of course at the start of the game you take the Persian path and you convert to Zoroastrianism and then of course you're basically got a whole country under your command which is Hellenic and not your state religion so it kind of got me geared up for this because I kind of know now how to play with like religious conversion mechanics especially in nature where the majority of the religion is not your state religion and um, of course it's the Indian subcontinent we never tried it before so hell yeah let's get into it um, before I do start the episode proper uh, for those who don't know yet I have created a discord for the community the link will be in the description below please guys go and check it out if you ever have any questions or anything it's on there you can ask me um, there's a special subcategory ask a stoner just go there ask and I'll try to answer your questions and anything as quickly as possible uh, anyway without any further ado, let's get rolling. So as the Mauryas, we have the heritage of Chandrag Guputa or Chandragupta. I have no idea how that's pronounced. I probably kind of destroyed the word, but oh well. It gives us 5% pot capacity, which ain't bad. It also gives us plus 10% religious tech investment, which is fairly decent. However, there is a disgusting and horrible aggressive expansion impact, plus 15%. That's vile. That is pretty much horrible, um, so we're going to have to make do with that. Um, we are an aristocratic monarchy, which means, of course, rulers reign for life, and we have one military idea slot, two oratory idea slots, and if we assign them, we gain a nice little minus 0.05 tyranny reduction, a plus 8% citizen happiness, and plus 10% Freeman output, I think that is. And of course, since we're a monarchy, off the bat, we gain plus 35% to our civ value. Religion-wise, we are Hindu for the time being. I don't know what it will be when we convert, but for the moment, since we are Hindu, it gives us plus one Diplo rep. Once we become Buddhist, I have absolutely God knows idea what it's going to be. I don't even think there's any Buddhist nations in the game here, is there? What about you? Are you Buddhist? No, you're not Buddhist. I don't think we start off as a Buddhist nation. I don't think there is one you can play as. But they're all Hindu. Yeah, I don't think there's any, so there's like basically none, so I have no idea what the um, Buddhist religion gives you. Unless I can actually hover the mouse cursor over here, and it won't dominant religion Buddhist, it doesn't tell me. So yeah, I literally have no idea. I can just see Hindu, 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 and yep, yeah, it's going to be a big surprise to find out what it actually does. But anyway, at the moment, we have plus one to our Diplo rep. Culture, we are Magadi, which is part of the Prakian culture group. Now, this is majoritarily situated in the east of India, all the way over here, like this culture group. Um, so that is that. Who are we? We are a Raj, or Raja, which is the king, and this is Chandraputta, the first Maurya, and we are 6997. He's not a bad ruler. We do have a lot of territories already, 304. I very rarely started off as a state this size, which is kind of new for me. I normally start off kind of smaller than that, so this is also going to be very new, because I've never really started off with something this big. We have a whopping nearly 4,000 pops, 3,936, 25 nobles, 681 citizens, 948 freemen, 1,091 tribals, we do need to get rid of them, and 1,191 slaves. Diplomacy-wise, we start with quite a few subjects. We have a tributary, which is a Tavia down here. I don't know if I can integrate them. Um, I have another tributary, Poravia, here. We also have a feudatory here, um, which is just, where's that? It's just up here. We also have this one here and this one, so we have quite a few. Um, I don't know if I can integrate them all yet. I need to double check actually if I can integrate tributaries and tributaries. I think I can, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, difficulty hard as per usual. Um, I just like playing on hard. I think very hard at the moment. Uh, I mean, I could up it, but nah. I'll, I'll, I'll probably try very hard when the new update comes up, just for a bit of fun. Um, anyway, we're going to play on Iron Man mode, of course, obviously, because we do want the achievement. And let's get rolling. Bim, bam, and bloody boom. I haven't created the achievement 
run yet, so I need to save the game. I haven't really started it out. This is the first time starting things. So, Ashoka's uh, Pillars. There we go. Boom. Okay, so this is the first time I've turned this on. I've never, ever turned it before. Normally, I kind of like to maybe have a quick check before I start things out, but I thought, hell no, let's just dive straight in and see what we can do. Now, before we get anything, like, before we start off, let's kind of go over the plan here. Now, from my previous campaigns, I know that the Seleucids and Moria either go to war to each other, or they, the Seleucids surrender at Ocosia. I don't know how this works, but hopefully they'll surrender it to us and we get to take it, and that means we have a nice big client state protecting our western border, and I could probably fortify the crap out of my only passages, like up here, and maybe down these two sections, and then we don't need to worry about the Seleucids. They will probably have their own problems located over here with all the Diadochi Wars and everything like that. Again, none of my business. So the first order of uh, kind of the first order of the day would be to kind of get this on our side. Just to kind of protect that flank. The next thing I'd like to do now, we have to conquer all of India. So I guess all of India, if I could actually pop up the achievement, would it show me if I went to the Shockers Pillars? Where is it? It's a hard achievement, apparently. So I need to basically own everything. Where do I need to own everything? Does it highlight and show me? What if I have to do that? No, it says I need all out of what? Out of Gandhara, Moria, Moria, no, was it Maru, Gandhara, Madhyesa, Prakya, Vin, oh god, there's a load of them. There is a load of them. I might have to go through them a little bit later on, but I'm going to guess it's like this, 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 probably this, and even these down here. That's what I'm going to guess. So, since we need that, the first thing I want to do is get the regions up north here by the Himalayas, definitely. Because these are going to be pretty easy to defend, so I want to knock them out and then fortify the borders as fast as possible. Which means none of these pesky tribal scumbags here will be annoying me, and then we can just focus on taking out what is left in the south. Sounds like a good plan. While we are conquering, we need to kind of make sure that we tech up. I would like to get as like, much tech as possible. Why? Because if I go into the laws quickly and there's a nice little kind of thing here that goes a natural religious conversion so as soon as we hit nine civic advance level we can enact this policy which gives us plus 30 percent and that's 30 percent that's massive to conversion speed and considering that we need to change religion at some point and kind of can get 80 percent religious unity this is going to be vital i would also like to tech up because you have some neat little things in the tech trees where you can actually increase your conversion speed and so forth so the quicker we can get that the better now, the first thing we need to do as well is, uh, before we do anything, is have a look how we embrace Buddhism. So, right, it's down here. Embrace Buddhism, yeah, we need 200 PI. Okay, fair enough. 30 stability we lose, which is quite a lot. Monthly stability change goes down by 0.03. That's not that bad. I was thinking if it was going to be a native modifier, it would be a little bit harder than that. That is literally nothing. Um, however, every character does lose 20% loyalty. And for 220 months, we gain pop conversion speed plus 15%. Now, for when we embrace Buddhism... We need to make sure that we have the basic infrastructure ready, which is the temples and everything to help speed up conversion. So, because this bonus only lasts for 120 months. And I want to make the most of the bonuses, which would be minus 75% to cost to change Pantheon Deity, and the plus 15% to the pop conversion speed. Um, so, that is what we need to do. However, what's this? Baras, Barat Varsha. What's that? That's like an empire formable, I think. And I need basically all of India. Okay. Wow. That is a lot of land. That is um, more than I expected. Uh, so we adopt the Empire Government form. Um, and what do I get here? So we get plus 10, minus 10% 10 war score cost, uh, plus 12% freeman output, plus 12% enslavement output. Okay, I think that's like kind of generic for all the empires, the um, kind of bonuses you get for assigning the ideas. However, we do gain Badat Varsha, which gives us ooh, plus 25% pop conversion speed. That is going to be incredibly useful. The quicker we can get that, the quicker... Yeah. That is really useful, so maybe the quicker we can conquer all this, the better it will be. And the quicker we can get that bonus. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Okay, so that's the plan. Anyway, enough of me rambling on, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is check our omens. What do we have? Anything good here? Uh, we have uh, Fort Defense here, but I'm not at war, so I don't need it. State Religion Happiness. I don't really need that yet, to be honest. Um, these are all going to change as soon as we change Deity, by the way, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, what's this one here? National tax, that's very good. And national slave output plus 8.9%. Yeah, we're going to make the most of that, definitely. 
definitely make the most of that. That's the first one we're going to take down. More gold, the better. How much gold do we make, by the way? 19.7. So, yep, yeah, that is fairly decent. I have to say, I'm quite happy with that. The next thing we need is to fill out our idea slots here, and I think we are going to fill them out accordingly. Actually, I might not, actually. National City and Happiness are not bothered too many at the moment, no. Um, I do want the Mal of Armies, which is very useful. I do want Tax Farming, because I want the gold, and I think that is going to be incredibly useful. So we shall definitely go tax farming. And then I want to go for probably something down here. Now, there is this pot conversion speed here. That is incredibly useful, which is why I want to tech up as fast as possible as well. Because that plus 20% to pot conversion speed is growing. It's growing. I mean, if we get that and the laws and the tech and the bloody empire form, we could get like a massive percentage bonus to our conversion speed, which is going to be absolutely vital. So what I want to go for first here down here. Water pop gain? Not really. Maybe loyalty of generals and animals would be pretty nice, I have to say. Trying to them, keep them under control, but I don't really have many armies, so that's not going to be a problem. Let's go for... How much commerce do I make? I don't really make that much commerce, do I? More like a taxing nation. What I want here, probably go for the build cost. I am going to be building some stuff, so yeah, let's go for the build cost. That is what I want first off, so that's fantastic. I'm not going to go for any tech here because we have a lot of pops, which means it costs a lot. And this gold, I'd sooner spend it on increasing our army and getting some buildings going. I have noticed there is something down here, Barmy script. Integrate your culture happiness plus 2.5%. That's not bad. That's pretty cool. But I'm not going to get any of this yet because it's, yeah, it's just going to cost a lot of gold. And the gold can be used for other things to start off with. Now, trade. What do we have? Do I have enough food here? I think so. I mean, yeah, I've got a load of grain, so I don't really need that. Um, let's import some things. So what can I import? What we got? Can I import any wine? No, I don't want to trade with the Saluk. Actually, do I want to trade with the Saluk kids? I don't know. I don't want to go to war with them, so maybe if we trade with them, it would stop them being our enemy. Yeah, let's get. Let's try. Let's try this. I'm going to trade some wine with them. Because it reduces army maintenance cost. I'm also going to trade salt with some of these people. Um, who are you guys? Abacosia. Hydrosia, Pandya, and the Seleucids. Yeah, I'll go Seleucids and Pandya. Again, it all increases, um, decreases our army maintenance costs. So we've already got a, like, 10% reduction on army maintenance, which is going to help our gold quite nicely. Uh, the next thing I want is probably horses. I would like to get some horses. Unless I can actually recruit some somewhere. I don't know if I can, if I have horses. I do have horses over here. In this section. But I would like to get some in the capital, to be honest. I think it would be useful. Yeah, let's get some horses in the capital. It does help. I'll, game, I'll get it from... Who are you? Bactria. Why not? Get some Bactria here. And I will get it from probably the Seleucids. I'm, I'm hoping that we're not going to go to war with them. So, But we'll find out pretty soon. What I've got. I've got a navy here, which I'm going to keep. Because it allows me to ferry units down here quicker. I, mean, I don't think it costs me too much, does it? Uh, only six gold. I can maintain that. Next, commander. We need some commanders for our armies. Or for the navy first, actually. Let's, let's give a commander to the navy, because I have a scorned family, so... Probably you, to be honest. I mean, you're not the best guy, but you're not the worst guy, so I'll put you. And that should get rid of the scorned family, so now I can assign proper competent generals to the other armies. So over here, we will assign... Oh god, we've got chariots. Oh god. Chariots? Do they have chariots? What's our traditions? Archers, chariots, chariots. Yeah, a lot of chariot stuff. So I might actually go down chariots, to be honest. Chariot war elephants. Definitely chariot and war elephants. Yeah, it's got to be chariot and war elephants. Let's have a look at the units quickly here. I want to see what's effective against... I mean, what's effective against heavy cav? Chariots aren't effective against them. Archers aren't effective against them. Elephants aren't. Like cav aren't. Horse archers aren't. Okay. So they don't have any traditions that help with heavy cav. So maybe we need to just go down and focus probably on what we have. So archers, chariots, and elephants and heavy infantry, I think. Maybe get a bit of light cav on the flanks, because I do like flanking with light cav. But we'll see what we can do. Anyway, let's pop you on. Who we got first? Who are you? You're pretty good. Udaikin Shuka. You do have Confident, which gives a chariot discipline and heavy cab discipline. And you are loyalish, so I'll pop you on. No problem, brother. You can have that army to command. Um, this one here can have probably another commander. I'll probably put you. Me, myself, will command that one. Might as well. And what about this one over here? We've got another 8k stack. 
and I will probably hand you to this guy. Actually, you're very disloyal. And I have a few disloyal people now, so maybe... Hmm, I'll probably give it to you. Well, actually, no, let's have a look at our government first. Let's see what we can do. Is there anyone like any minor characters I can get rid of? You're a minor character. So, I'm going to get rid of you for the moment. Any other minor characters? Not there. What about in the tech section? Yeah, they're not minor characters. So, looks like we're going to have to give this command to a not so competent guy. Why do you have a little bit of power base? Because you're the head of the family. Yeah, I ain't giving you any troops then. No way, that's not going to happen, buddy. Um, should have actually given you to the ship command. But, oh well, I'll put you there instead. Who else can I get rid of? Not much. I've got four out of four. I don't think I can get rid of anyone else. Yeah, these are all members of the family. So it's going to be quite hard to get these guys, um, keep these guys in check. Any governors I can get rid of? You're a minor character, so I could probably get rid of you, buddy. And then I could probably give... Yeah, no, I don't want to. You're going to stay scorned. I'm really not bothered. Yeah, you can stay scorned. I don't want to give that head of family too much power because he's going to be a pain in my backside. Anyway, now that's done, let's sort the army out. Now, we have a bit of gold. I think we make, what, 18.5 gold per month. I can upgrade the size of the armies, and I do want to do that. So here, what do I want? Do I want to just kind of put on archers and stuff? Do I want to go down the traditions route, what we have? Or do I want to go down, like, another route? I mean, I suppose I could get a couple of war elephants, but I'll probably get that on the main army. So here, I think we'll go for archers. For the moment. I can get heavy infantry, but I don't want to at the moment. We don't make enough gold. So let's go for some archers. Let's go one, two... We might as well. I mean, I think our traditions do go down this archer offense and all that sort of stuff, so we might as well. And they do cost cheaper. So we can definitely do that. So we'll go for two archers. Actually, no, let's go four. One, two, three, four. And then we'll go for four cam on the flanks. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm going to keep you probably over here. Now, do I have any roads, by the way? We have no roads. It's going to take us forever to march. I hope the... Um, Salukis don't attack us, or whatever happens. Here now, I want to probably get rid of the archers, and I'll probably add them to this stack up here, maybe. I think that would be good. I mean, here I'd like something a little more competent. Maybe heavy cav, and... Maybe heavy cav, and something else. Do I want to do that? I'd like to get a heavy cab, elephants, and a light cab. I think that could do a massive, like, rampage. Yeah, let's do that. So let's go for... One, two, three heavy cab. One, two, three war elephants. And then we'll go for two extra light cab units there. The archers I will get rid of. And I'll add these to... Maybe this force over here, I think? Yeah, we'll add that to that force. I think that's more than good. Yeah, we'll add that to them over there. Here, I will probably add the same comp here. I don't want to kind of fiddle about with that too much there, so we'll go for two extra chariots. And I think that's enough forces for the moment. We should still make enough money at the end of that to be able to do what we want. Okay, now the setup has been done. Let's go for the missions. So, stabilize and grow of anti. Where's of anti? Mm, do I want to stabilize and grow of anti? Not really. Uh, the matter of Prakia gives me free claims in this section, so I think we'll do that. I think Prakia's Prak over there. I think we checked at the start, didn't we? Yeah, it is. Prakia's over here. I thought I remembered where that was from. But let's go for the matter of Prakia. We'll start the mission. We'll consult the court. That seems all good. And uh, what do we have here? Are you my client? You're not my client. Are you my client? You are my client. Can I integrate you? I can if you have the opinion for us. So... So, 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 I can do that a bit afterwards. So, you're not my client. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a claim on you, buddy. And I want your whole province. I'm also going to make a claim on this guy. Um, and I probably need a claim on this dude as well afterwards. I'm going to make a claim on you. Because these are the places I want to take out first. Definitely. If I can get claims on these guys, this will be fantastic. I can actually block the passages. 
And uh, by the way, speaking of blocking passages, let's have a look. Do I have any cities on the border with you guys down here? I do. I do, I do, I do. And we have a city here, so I am going to fortify this one. Which seems to be a good thing to do. I have a city there also. I might fortify that, but not just yet. Um, is this a city? No, do I have any other cities in this area? I have this city here. But that could work for me. I think this is a city it is. So I'm going to fortify this one. And I am going to fortify this one. And what about if I go further up? Now I don't think I have... Aha, I have a passage here. Do I have another city in this section? No, I don't. I have one up here, though. What the hell is this building? Does that give me a modifier? The Temple of Saraswati in Texila. Okay, it's like a holy site. Cool. Um, do I, go with, I think I should probably go for something there, to be honest. Um, I feel that protecting it with the fort is the best thing to do. Okay, now that's done, I think we're finally ready to start the game. It's been, what, 20 fucking minutes of me blabbering on, so let's roll. Bim, bam, boom. Uh, what's this? Okay, an end to the Greek menace. Okay, this got to be scripted events. I like this. So, decades ago, Alexander the Great invaded our subcontinent and defeated the local rulers of the Indus Valley. Many things have changed since then, however. The death of the Great Conqueror has seen his empire divided amongst his squabbling successors and the meteoric rise of the Chandragupta... I'm destroying the language again, I do apologise. Moria has transformed northern India. In the past year, Mauryan armies have seized the Indus Valley and are advancing on the positions of the successor King Seleucos. An emissary from the Seleucos is from Seleucos is now offering to give this region up in return for the Treaty of Friendship with our Empire. Okay, so this is the event probably where we actually get to decide if we go to war with the Seleucids or if we get to take land off them. Now I always thought it would be if you played the Seleucids, but it looks like if you play as the Moors, you get to choose, basically, if you go to war. I thought it was the other way around. So what do I do? I can accept this offer. Um, I can marry my daughter with... I can know I can actually marry my heir. And I can marry myself, sorry, with the daughter of Seleucos. Okay, Seleucid gains five cohorts of war elephants. Okay. The provinces of Bayman, Arakoja, and others become under my control. And Arakoja becomes my satrapy. And Gandhara stops being a client state with the Seleucids, and they have a truce for me till 465. Oh, hell yeah. And what's the other one? No, Persia will be ours, and I basically declare one. Uh, hell no. Uh, well, let's go for this. I, I want to see what happens here. So what, are we, what do we get? Well, let's accept this offer. Whoa! Okay. Okay, so we basically got this big chunk. That's cool. And this is now ours. Fantastic. Okay, so we've got our client. We have finally got our client. That's good. So now this border is secure, well I say secure, the next thing we need to do is properly block it all down. Um, now I think they can come through this way which I don't want them to so let's get a fort on this section. I think that's a pretty good thing to do. And then we're going to get a fort on this section here. I'm happy with that because I didn't want to block it all off, I still don't trust him so I want to make sure everything's right. I can decide with the governor to back Triana, is that a tiny region? It is tiny. And you know who I'm going to give this to? Well, this disloyal pretender guy here who's got the head of a family. But you're going to have that. You're going to stop peeing me off. You're going to be happy. That's fantastic. Okay, that's good business. I like that. That is really good business. So now we can focus on taking out these guys now. So, what was this place here? Are you? Is this my client as well, Gandhara? No, it's not. I could probably take these out as well. I should do at some point. Is this... What region is this? That's the Himalaya region. I'm not interested in the Himalaya region. Um, anyway, I think we're pretty much done here. I can colonise some land, but I don't want to colonise that, I don't think. Yeah, it's a completely different area. I don't want to colonise it. No way, Jose. Um, before I start things off again, let's actually s s influence a little bit here. I want some more PI, desperately. And let's roll. Bim, bam, boom. Okay, that was a good start. So, I like it how we can actually choose how it happens. I always thought it was the other way around and it was the Seleucids that chose, but obviously no. Anyway, the matter of Prakia, the region of Prakia, has remained a valuable source of trade and commerce for many, for many long years. Many amongst the court in such a bountiful land would serve much better purpose if fully integrated under the Mauryan banner. So I'm going to peaceful war, peaceful approach, or warlike. Warlike. They should be, they would have to submit to our rule. Am I building forces? I am building forces again here. Have they done yet? Very nearly. So are you allied with anybody? No. What about you? 
Oh, you're my client, are you? Oh, I'm making claim on you. Who am I making claims on? I can't remember. Oh, I am making a claim on you, but you're now my tributary. I'm making claim on the wrong one. Crap. Oh, well. Anyway, let's get some trade. Let's do that. That's fine. I'll accept all that. By the way, I am actually going to put auto trade on for this one. So, where do I give this? Trade overview. There we go. Um, auto trade. And I'm going to stop trading any food resource. Because food is just vital. So, I want to keep my food. So, where's the vegetables? Veg, veg, veg. Where's the veg? There it is. Anything else? No, I think we're good. Yep, then the basic food resources that I want to keep. Do I have any other trade routes, by the way? I do. Um, I could probably get some grain in here. I will do. Let's get some... I don't need grain here, so I'll probably get precious metals, to be honest. Get some from them. Here, I don't need food either, so we'll go for glass. We'll trade with the Seleucids for the moment. They do like us, so why not? Might as well trade with them. Earthenware, Seleucids. Yep, trade with you. You don't... Oh, you need food. Oh yeah, you were going to get some food for you, buddy. This will increase our cash flow a little bit, so there's no reason not to do this. Um, get some from you. That's good. What about over here? Got to get some extra food there, to be honest. Get some Seleucids. And here we need food, desperately. I had no idea we were losing so many food, but there we go. Okay, problem solved. Good. What's the gold like now? 23 per month. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. So we've increased the size of our armies. And I think it's time to probably get some conquests going. I could hopefully get one done by this episode. Hopefully, if the claims get done quickly. What is my diplomacy status? Appeasing stance. I'll probably keep it on that, to be honest. Because it does reduce our aggressive expansion when we are going to get some. And I want to con like expand as fast as we can. Sounding out the opposition. So debate has raged for many years over our rocky relationship with the nation states resident in Prakia. Samatata, a nation many more equal friends, stands well placed to provide us with assistance in our endeavours to control Prakia. Uh, Warlight. Sorry, buddy. But you are going down. Like, definitely going down. Uh, so where's my main force, by the way? I'm trying to think. Can't remember where it is. Is this my main force? Um, is that all I had on there? Probably was, to be honest. But here we've got a nice little 10k stack that's going to help us. What's this one? We've got a 13k stack here. What are these guys? Oh yeah, they're joining him, of course. So we have actually a 16k stack there. And I would like to probably increase that a little bit more. But let's go for one extra supply train. And then three of each. Yeah, that's good. That'll be a big stack. They can do most of the damage. Um, I want to make sure that they've got the heavy cab there. Am I, am I making elephants for this army? I am. Why do I have chariots then? That is the question. I have one extra chariot there that I don't want. So let's get rid of him. Then I'll add this chariot to this army over here, I think. Yeah, I'll add it to you over there. Our capital is over there, by the way. I think it is. Yep, that is our capital. Pally Patra. Right, it's a wicked capital. Farmlands. It's on silk as well. That's crazy. That's a really nice capital. It's actually beautiful, in fact. Uh, what are these guys? These are my war elephants? No, they're my light cav. Of course, they're the light cav I'm making for you guys. I've nearly got enough to start another claim. You're in a defensive league with... These guys. But that's fine, because I will conquer you. So... Actually lets me eliminate multiple ones in one go. Again, we're just going to stick to the regions that we need. I'm not going to go beyond the Himalaya. It's going to be an easily defensible location. I like it that we built forts down there. They're all going pretty well. Um, the court speaks. So we gain enhanced militarization, which gives our war score cost minus 5%, but our diplo rep goes down. But whatever. War score cost goes down so we can conquer more land in one go. Abundant produce. So the provincial officials of Pundra report in the district has seen unprecedented harvest this year with great jubilations for Parvati being held in settlements large and small. These extra unexpected revenues could help bolster the food reserves of the province. But then again, a such a gift from the gods is surely intended to benefit the entire Morian people. Gain 200 food in the province of Pundra. They'll give it to the people. Someone gains loyalty. Probably the governor of the province. We will shower the people of Palapatra with bread and popularity. Or the surplus would put to good use again gold. 
Let's give it to the people of Shurasena. I do gain loyalty with the governor over there, I think. And that suits me fine. That definitely suits me well. We'll take that. Definitely take that. Now, what can I do? I can probably get you guys ready to go across the border. Um, is there any way I can kind of maintain you guys supply-wise? No? Can I... Yeah, I can. I can maintain you guys up here. So you're going to go on that holy site. And I'm going to want to bring these fellas up as well. So we have got our war elephants. Let's actually set the right comp here. So I want heavy cav. Then the war elephants to smash through everything. And then the cav on the flank. That, I like that. That suits me fine. We've got 3,000 war elephants. That's pretty insane. Um, let's now bring you guys up north as well. Because of course... Who am I going to war against, by the way? Up here. Not you, because you're my client. So are you. So it's this guy. And... Just double check this. So it's you three here. So that's fine. So I want one guy to wipe him out. And I need two to wipe this guy out. No problem. We'll also bring these dudes over. We'll force march you, fellas. Let's go. Force march you guys. Probably here. Then as soon as we're in place, we'll go to war. That sounds like a good plan. I'll probably make the first episode a bit longer, so we've got half an hour. I'll probably do a 45 minute one for the first one. I mean, why not? Again, I have a lot of clients. And we are going to need to improve opinion with them. At some point. So I can integrate them. I am going to need to integrate them all. Everything is freaking Hindu. Well, at least we have a lot of religious unity to start off with, but that's all going to change when we convert. Anyway, trade wins. Do I go for local tax or pop growth? Well, local tax, of course. Why not go for the local tax, buddy? Why not? I've already do with the fort here, to be honest. Um, now I've got a claim on our Tava and Nabaka, so that's been done there, and that's fairly cool. Um, let's actually put a fort here on this city, because we can pass through there, and I want to block this off as well. Yeah, that blocks it all off. These two block it off. So I like that. Let's do that. Um, I'm going to deal with these guys. Well, that is probably for later on. That is really not something at the moment that I need to worry about. Do I have a claim on you now, buddy? No claim on you. Now, who done it claims on? I can't. I've, my mind's gone. I made a claim on this guy, unfortunately. And the backer. I can take out the backer first. I mean, that shouldn't be too hard to wipe these guys out. But no, we'll make a claim on this guy. What's, which province is it? Casimira or... Uh, either way. Yeah, let's go Casimira. It's got the most. Either way, I'm going to take it all anyway, so it's not much of a problem. I could probably take out this guy first. I mean, it would give me... Yeah, let's wipe this guy out. Actually, no. I'm going to wait till I build the fort here because if I don't build the fort, he can move. I'm going to build one there as well. But he can move. So we're going to take these guys out first. I'll just wait for the claim a little bit longer. It's really not a problem. So here I don't have enough food. That's normal because we have armies moving through the damn place. Um, what? How many do I make? Two PI per month. Tech-wise, we're going to have to work a lot. So we're going to have to kind of try and speed through the tech levels. And for that, I'm going to need to stockpile a lot of gold. Uh, bureaucratic issues. So we have issues keeping track of our satrapids as well as taking care of our people at large. With our bureaucracy stretched thin, our subjects are becoming ever more unruly. And as things stand right now, we will have to care for one of the groups as we're unable to control both of them. So we'll take care of our satrapids. I lose integrated culture happiness. I either... Again, unfit overlord, which means I lose loyalty of subject states for 60 months. And I will lose gold. Yeah, I'll lose integrated culture happiness. Screw it. How many cultures are integrated there? That is the question. Are oh, these all integrated? Okay. So what about the pops that aren't integrated? Like, oh, So all of the big ones are integrated. Oh, so that's why it's pretty easy to control things. Because they're all pretty much integrated. So I don't need to change anything there just yet. Oh, and this be finished. Not yet. Next, I think I have claims down here, don't I? I already have a load of claims down these guys. I could probably start making claims on some of the others down south at some point. 
Well, really not yet. I probably need to get a claim on this. Yeah, I'll make a claim on this section as well. Just to make it all that a little bit costless. Like when we go for the peace treaty. Um, building wise, if I was to go Libs, we can build a load of them. And I think I might go Lib Academy all over the place very quickly. How much does it cost to build one? 33. I wish I had a surplus of stone. I probably should have imported stone to the capital. A surplus of stone would have gone a long way to helping us do that. But oh well. Uh, Rajan Pantuka offers friendship. So he's one of my satrapies, I think. Or one of my kind of vassals or clients, whatever. So I'll become friends with you, buddy. Gain opinion, no problem. I'll happily do that for you. So I've got 52% with you. We finished on August 453. So I've got six months. Well, seven or eight months, more like. Um, what's this? I have a unit here left. Well, I suppose I could leave that and build another army with it later on. Yeah, we'll have like a couple of 10k stacks here. I don't really need... I don't think I should make too many big armies because the realm is so big. So maybe a multitude of small ones is going to be the best bet. But honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> this is totally new. Uh, the Seleucids are fighting everybody now. Good. Good, good, good. Um, Bactria are on their side. I don't like having Bactria on my doorstep. I literally don't like having Bactria on my doorstep. So we're going to go to Fort there. Stop movement through that way. Do I have another city in this area or not? I have this one. Yeah, I think one here would be a good, like a good choke point. Is in the mountains as well, so I'll pop one on there. Again, just choke points on the borders, just to kind of make sure they leave us alone, and it just makes it a lot, little bit easier for us to kind of do our business without having to worry about the other scumbags. Right, where are we at now? 75%. Come on, buddy. So, are you fighting someone, dude? No, you're not. But you will be soon. And I think I'm going to go through this way. Actually, no, we'll go through this way. You're going to stay there. You're going to go up north. And you're actually, no, you're going to go this way. And you're going to go up north there. We'll take these three out in one go. You have to be wary of these guys, though. They're big, but I don't really have think they have that much good land. They like have no manpower and no men. But they're not going to be a problem. Uh, what's up with, like, legitimacy like? Is it, like, low or something? So, I am 41. I have this child. He's not bad, actually. He has a couple of children, but they're not too good. What a Seleucos she has. I don't think the children get it. If they have children, I don't think they get the train. Anyway, twisting the knife. So, uh, for reasons unknown un only to himself, he has begun... This guy has begun to view me with jealousy and distrust. So he's now my rival. I now hate you. Come on, claim. 92%. A month and a half. And I'm ready to go. And I will destroy everything. Only a level 1 fort there. That's kind of nothing really major. I've got another trade route. Cool. So he must have, like, promoted a noble or something. So we're going to go for some stone. Just because the next set of stone reduces the build cost. And I do like having reduced build cost. It is fairly useful. Okay, we now have the claims. Let's roll. Let's roll, let's roll. I'm bringing in my clients. These guys and these. That's fine. Arakoja can come in as well, but whatever. That's fine. I'll happily bring you guys in. Take Casimir. Let's go. First war of the game, guys. First war of the game. I'm looking forward to it. Let's roll. So. We're actually going to go around here and deal with him that way. And then we'll actually go through from that side, I think. You're going to go here and take that out. And you're going to go straight away and take his capital. Let's go. Because I know he's going to come through here. I can see it coming. So that's why I'm going to force march around here and deal with him. Also, it will be great to be able to build roads. Because roads are going to be needed. Considering the realm is so bloody big, we are going to desperately need them. Anyway, question of competence. So apparently someone's been slandering me. Um, I can gain forgiving. That's alright. Or I can gain vengeful. I think forgiving would be a good one to have. And I didn't gain it. Crap. That was annoying. Okay, buddy, you think you can take that off me? Oh, and we gain depressed now. Are you kidding me? We're going to lose health now. 
Okay, so I've caught him. He's going to be dead. That's good. You're going to march on him here. You can't actually go past me here because I've got the fort. Have I got the right organization here? I have. It says apparently I'm going to lose, but yeah, I have elephants. So does he, though. He actually has war elephants also. That's going to be interesting. Let's see what happens. Oh my god, he got absolutely smashed. That was interesting. Let's see what happens here. So, apparently he's got a better commander than me, which he has, but we have more men. I think we have the better kind of layout, so we should be fine. Yeah, we're fine. Oh god, he is reinforcing, and then we beat him. So he's now stopped moving, that's good news. Now I'm going to take this before he can take that back. I'm going to quickly split one off here, quickly, just so I can take this back. We're negative 28%, negative 21% there. You've taken that, which is good stuff, so now you move on to his capital. Again, our clients are arriving now, so there's nothing really bothering us. Got another claim on these guys, so it's going to cost us less now to occupy it. In the war score, which is pretty good. Um, apparently, I will lose this fight again. I don't really know why. Apparently, because my general's crap, but... I don't know why he's taking that into account. I can get you a force march now. I don't need you on that. There we go. Look, just a clean wipe. And now he's attacking me. Are you there? Oh, no, you're not. You changed your mind. Good on you, buddy. My client's coming in to deal some damage to him, which is what I want to see. You've took that back, so now you go back over here and go and join up with the force. Client's doing the biz over there. Yep, a fairly clean war for the moment. I have to say, fairly clean war. Oh god, okay, there's actually quite a few men coming this way. Let's authorise attachments. Yeah, I might have a little bit of difficulty winning this one. Unless my client comes and helps me. But I don't think he's going to be doing that. So I might have to hold out here. Come on. Come on. Kill him. Oh, what happened? Oh god, he actually got me because he raised a unit on top of him. Okay, that's why. But it looks like we've actually held out here. That's good. I wasn't expecting to, to be honest. Well, I'll take it. I'll take it, I'll take it. What are you doing down here, buddy? That's not cool. You should leave me alone. I'll join you together. 42% here, 42% there. So the siege... Where's the siege been won? Okay, that siege has been won. That's good news. Um, now we go and we occupy... We're going to kill this guy. We'll occupy the rest of the land here. As soon as this falls, I will probably go and deal with the rest of his troops. I would like to separate piece them out one by one. I think it would be good to be able to do that. Yeah, let's force march you guys all the way over here now. We're going to deal with these two, with these stragglers. This is where clients and stuff are really useful. They're just mopping up the excess troops. Uh, scandal. So, Scandal is unfortunately part of an average day in the Morian court. Ordinarily, we'll simply ignore such petty squabbles. However, on this occasion, the esteemed Udayan Shunga was found in flagrante delicto with his lover, Resvata Moria. So, you were cheating on her with her. Again, none of my business, buddy. You do whatever you like, buddy. Okay, the sacking of Aura. So what do I do to this place? None shall hide, or let the looting be gentle? Yeah, I'm going to let the looting be gentle. We are going to integrate the land, so I don't really want to kind of take everything off them. Um, let's now go and occupy this. What are you doing? Well, you're at war with me as well, aren't you? Of course. I completely forgot that he joined the war. Um, let's go and occupy this first, and then we'll go and occupy the rest. Let's move. I've caught this little 2k stack. They're going to be dead. We've occupied this. That's good. Don't know where they're coming from. No one else. Let's go and occupy this province capital. And I should be able to piece out pretty quickly here once we occupy the province capitals. I probably won't even need to separately piece out because... Yeah, I can just... I, I mean, there won't be that much aggressive expansion by taking it all, so... I think I can pretty much occupy it all. I mean, there's no other forts in the vicinity. Right, you're here. You're going to go around there now. Let's finish this off. You've taken that. We'll go and occupy this. And then I should be able to finish it. Hello? They do have a lot of men, though. It's really annoying when they have loads of men running around like this. They kind of run around crazily. And um, that's been taken. Let's now take the rest of the stuff. 
I mean, I could probably go... Let's go and deal with the enemy over there. We'll go and try and occupy some of his lands. He'll get us extra war score. Have I caught this guy? I think I have. Yeah, we caught this dude, so you're going to be dead. Thank you. The war elephants at their best. This 10k stack's caught that stack. Again, it's increasing the war score just by winning these battles. Oh my god, okay. Why am I losing this fight? You've got the right comp. Yeah, I might lose that battle, actually. I was victorious up north, but this guy is going to be a pain in my butt. Yeah, he beat me. He literally beat me. How did he beat me? Okay. Alright, let's see what I can piece out for now. Yeah, done you. That's good as well. Now, how much do I need for all this? Negative 35 still. I could probably separate piece you fellas, to be honest. Oh, I can't because I don't occupy all the land, do I? Um, that's a shame. So, we are going to have to move down here now. We're going to have to go and occupy that. Then I can separate piece the guys out. Um, let's go and deal with you. Let's go and separate piece them out bit by bit. It's going to be easier if I do it this way. Let's go and help him out. I'll just occupy all of his land here, then I'll occupy all this. You guys, I'll just let you reorganise over here. It would have been easier if I built all the forts, to be honest, but... Unfortunately, I didn't do it. I should have probably waited for the forts, but oh well. I couldn't be bothered to wait. Let's actually force march you guys all the way down here now. Yeah, you can go over here and deal with this dude. Now, I've got this 8k stack that's going to come and deal with this stack. You're here, so you're going to reorganise now quickly and try and get more men back. I like how he's kind of ransacking my land over here now. Such a shame. I will have vengeance. Anyway, receiving Eropos Sibirtid. So, Sibirios, first Sibirtid of Arcosia, was sent as one of his advisors to serve at our court as a gift to show it as a basis to Moria, as is customary for some satrapies. It will give Sibirtios the first Sibirtid some influence in court. It would be a shame on his honour if Eropos Sibirtid did not live up to his reputation. So, he comes to my court. Yeah, why not? Come on, dude. I'll welcome you to my court, no problem. Um, why aren't you moving down here, buddy? Like, you need to go and get him. I don't know why you stopped moving. So he's probably going to take that back now. That's annoying. Well, there's a road there, actually, so it shouldn't take too long. Yeah, I've caught him. There we go. So we've got him. The elephants can do the damage. So you've been dealt with. That's good. You're now going to go back in here. It's that 1k stack here that's being a pain in my book right? Alright, these have been dealt with. Good. Good, they're all dead. Can you stop ransacking my lands, please, buddy? I would appreciate it if that was the case. Um, you now can go up here and occupy this, and I think I should be able to separate piece that guy out. What's going on down here? Still nothing. Anyone else come over here? And Still nothing down here. But I'm trying to get used to kind of managing a massive realm at the start. I'm not used to it. It's just completely big, or way bigger compared to what I'm used to. No longer pouring precious metals. I actually... No, I don't need to. I'll check the trade afterwards. Can I set up a piece you now? No, I can't, because of course you're occupying my land down south. But you're being a total douchebag. Well, that's fine. Let's go for the national slave output here again. Try and get some extra gold in. I have quite a bit, so at the end of the war, I think, and for the next episode, we could definitely build some lives and stuff. Anyway, low DK Seleucid inspires the army. Good, we gain 10, well, she gained 10 popularity, and we gain plus 5% morale of armies, which is what we want. Um, now we're just going to go and occupy everything over this side. And you guys are going to go and deal with this dude. As soon as I occupy this, I can peace out. So you, I can peace out. That's the first thing we're going to do. So I can take this, this, and this. So that's one guy knocked out the war. 12 aggressive expansion for that. That's quite a bit, actually. I wasn't expecting it to be that high. Oh well, we'll take it. That's fine. And the Cambodian Elite. So what are these guys? Are these my culture group? I don't think they are. No, uh, and I am going to kill them all. I know we'll banish them. Get aggressive expansion down a little bit. Oh, I've accidentally got a region that I didn't want. Oh, I have. 
I could probably release it to the client or something. Well, I'll probably just keep it. I don't know. We'll see. I completely missed that, to be honest. I didn't see. What about now? Would you would you be willing to peace out, buddy? And there you go, you would. That's fantastic. So I don't need to fight this war anymore. We've beat them. I get 22 of best expansion. Though. That's still quite a lot for this small chunk of land. Or maybe because I'm so big, I'm kind of looking at things in a smaller way. Even though they're pretty big. Anyway, we'll just put the piece out. Thanks, buddy. Again, we're going to banish them all. Get rid of them. Get aggressive expansion down a little bit. And I'm really happy with that. Yep, that's pretty cool. And I am going to end the episode here, people. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed the episode, please don't hesitate to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see some more Imperial Rome content, then please consider subscribing to the channel for more. And I'll hopefully catch you all in the next one to continue our Shockers Pillars Achievement Hunt campaign. Thanks for being here, people. And bye for now.